Hey folks, how you doing today? I'd like to go ahead and show you some of the attachments I have for my dingo and some of the different ways I use the dingo on the job. I got my dingo uh, probably eight to ten years ago if I had to guess and I have to say that it has definitely been a, a labor saver and a lifesaver on jobs. The thing I like about the dingo is because it's so compact you can get it into spots that you couldn't really get a skid steer uh, because of the wide tracks, it does a lot less damage on landscapes. And because of the size, I can bring my dingo on a trailer and all the attachments as well. So it's almost like a Swiss Army knife. This first tool I'm going to show you today is called an aerator. And the nice thing about the aerator is not only does it aerate the lawn, but as it aerates, it actually shakes the soil to loosen it up. This is a great solution if maybe you've really compacted soil bringing trucks onto a job site and you want to loosen that soil and put some grass seed down or it also does a wonderful job just as a normal aerator. Here I am removing some plastic edging from the landscape and boy you know once you get some grass roots around that edging and it gets grown in after 10 or 20 years it can really be a bear to get out. But look how nice that dingo just flicks it right out of the ground. Before I had the dingo I used to use a nice Troy built tiller to till landscape beds but I want you to notice how well the dingo digs into that soil. Because the tiller is so heavy and you have the weight of the machine on top of the tiller, it really pushes in there and does a great job loosening the soil. Now in this shot I'm preparing a bed for planting, and what I'll usually do is I don't even spray any herbicide to kill the grass that's there. I'll just take the tiller and drive it over the landscape and use that to, to till the grass in. And then once I'm done tilling the grass in, I'll go ahead and mix some amendment in. The dingo is a great tool for spreading topsoil and amendments on the landscape because you can very precisely control where you're going to put the material. And I can almost get it to the point where I just need to very lightly give it a good hand raking once I spread it with the machine because I've been so um, select in the way I place the materials. And I also would like you to notice how because of the tracks on the machine, it's having no problem pushing into the pile and scooping up the topsoil. I'll also use the dingo to scoop materials right out of the back of the truck. This video isn't very accurate about how I load wheelbarrows with the dingo, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the capacity of the bucket on the dingo. If I were going to load a wheelbarrow uh, with the dingo, I would have them facing perpendicular. I'd put two wheelbarrows side by side and then dump the materials into the front of the wheelbarrows. This is more just for illustration purposes, and I would never be carrying a wheelbarrow this full on a job site. I don't end up using the augers very often on job sites. Most of my jobs are of a size where by the time you hook up the auger, you could just go ahead and dig the holes yourself. On this planting, it was a fairly large planting with a lot of plants, so we did go ahead and use the augers. And I have to say that the amount of torque these augers have, uh, they really could go through just about anything. The only thing that's going to stop you is a very large rock or a um, boulder. And here is the best way to use your augers when you're planting on a job site. If you, you lay all your plants out and then you can either, because it was raining, you know, use the dry spots as a mark of where to, to dig your holes or put some spray paint around or just twist the pot to mark the soil then you can go through and auger all the, um, the soil and, and get the holes ready. And the thing I want to point out is when you're planting you know, three or five gallon containers with the auger, you're not going to dig a perfect hole that you can just place that plant in. You're still going to need to, to dig a little bit with your shovel, but that soil is already going to be so loose that it's, it's truly a pleasure to dig the hole and plant your plant once it's been dug with that auger. This is a tool called Nursery Jaws, and if you're ever buying Nursery Jaws, I recommend you get the longest fork you can as opposed to the shortest. You're never going to wish you had shorter forks, but quite often you'll wish you had longer ones. This is a job where I was working by myself, and the Nursery Jaws allowed me to move these very large trees with the greatest safety for me not, not hurting myself, and also the greatest benefit for the tree not damaging the tree by trying to manhandle it into the hole.
the first time I used my dingo like a wheelbarrow, I was pleasantly surprised because not only do you get the increased capacity, the, the loaded bucket on the dingo is about two full wheelbarrows of material, but it's also because the bucket is lower to the ground, it's, it's easier to load the bucket. So it's win-win all around because it's easier to load, it carries more material, and then if you have to wheel that material to dump it far or uphill, it's a lot less effort. Here's another surprising benefit of using the dingo with the tracks and my dump truck. I, I do have a low profile dump truck, so I'm not sure this is going to work with all dump trucks. But on a job, I can bring 10 yards of mulch or 4 yards of topsoil or gravel, scoop it right out of the back of the truck without dumping it and leaving a mess on the grass, place it where I need to place it, and the only time I have to touch it is when I touch it with a rake to spread it after it's where I need it to be. That is a huge benefit. And again, I don't know if this would work with a wheel dingo, but with the tracks and a low profile truck, it works great. The thing about using the dingo is if you've got it on the job, you just never really know what you're gonna end up doing with it. This was uh, uh, on my property, I was cutting a tree down and I just decided to, to use the dingo to prop up the branch. And after I did this job, I've actually had other jobs where I've been cutting trees up and I'll carry a 20 foot long tree trunk over to where I want to cut it and then I can cut it you know and make a pile in one area as opposed to cutting all the logs and having to pick up all the logs it, it makes moving the materials a lot easier now in the next shot you're gonna see where I finished cutting this branch and I'm using the dingo to to carry the, the brush away I just Put the small branches and, and twigs and such right on top of the um, the forks there and this is probably one of the coolest things I ever did with the dingo was I, I was just kind of curious if it would work so once we finished cutting the tree I went ahead and uh, just grabbed the whole trunk and carried it away and I assure you that dingo has a lot of car carrying capacity left where that could have been a much bigger trunk one of my earlier videos that I first made was how to transplant a tree, and this is some, some footage from that video. But look what I can do with the dingo. Um, I'm not destroying the lawn. It's got the power to muscle under the tree, and it's got the lift capacity to carry the tree. And the dingo is just so handy for transplanting trees and moving heavy objects around the landscape. Here's a job where we actually were using the dingo to transplant a, a hedge of boxwood. The, the wall behind the boxwood had to be rebuilt. So I'd go through and I'd take my nursery spade, I'd cut the roots around each individual plant, and then I would just sweep under there with the, with the uh, pallet forks and pick the plant out of the ground. And this would easily have been a two-man job. These are fairly heavy balls without the dingo. And once I got them out of the ground, then I would trim the balls a little bit smaller to make them more manageable. Why not use the dingo to clean up snow? Every winter I park the dingo in the garage and whenever it snows that's my go-to machine to clean up the snow. You just have to be very careful in deep snow you can get some snow caught in the tracks that causes trouble with the dingo. This is a job where I use the tiller to loosen the soil and then I use the dingo to scoop it out to dig a base for a shed and I moved all that soil to the lower side of the hole to hold the gravel up. All the gravel was scooped out of my truck and brought down to the hole and you could barely tell I drove across the lawn. This is the first film I ever recorded back in my flip video days and here I am using the stickler log splitter on my auger attachment to split some very large maple rounds. And while I'll admit it's not the fastest way to do it, it certainly is a lot less backbreaking than using the sledge and wedge to get those logs split.